guys. Hey guys. Welcome back to our channel. It's been a while. It has been years, like literally. Um, back from our traveling. I don't know. When did we come back? Came back in April 2019. Somewhere there. Yeah. But um, yeah, today we are here with an interesting video. Something very different. Yeah, sharing our story on our basically infertility journey. Grab your cup of tea or whatever you want to drink. We've got ours um, as we share our story. So it begins in Mauritius. We just got married. We went to be with our church family for about six months mm -hmm. and good old Laura just wanted to have I kids straight now. away. I want it now. Whoa, you know? let's just enjoy and each other know, first. Jack was like, oh babe, let's wait five years. I was like, five years. Five years seemed like ages away. Um, and then I was on the pill, but it made me feel kind of depressed, kind of down and a little bit Not suicidal. Not kind of down, very down. Really? You yeah, reckon? very down. It was a different Laura. Oh man, it was horrible. Mm. So I stopped taking the pill and we decided we're gonna go au natural, you know, live on the edge. <laughs> Um, anyway, well, we then realized we're not getting pregnant. I don't know. And we just kind of ignored it and like moved on with mm. life. We didn't really dwell on it. Um, yeah, just enjoyed life really until we came back to England, went on with life. We're yeah. very busy. So to be honest, at yeah. that time, I don't think, I think Laura had accepted that we weren't having kids straight away. Yeah. Um, we weren't not trying, but we weren't trying. Yeah. Um, and we were just so busy. Life was busy with a business. We yeah. were doing cakes at the time. Um, yeah. Just work. Life was very manic. So I don't think we we're ever rushing at yeah. that point. We didn't really think about having kids because, I don't know, I guess we were young and then everyone around mm. you kind of says, don't worry, it takes time anyway. Enjoy you know, yourselves. You know, you're newly married, that type mm. of thing. Um, and then fast forward, um, my periods were getting really bad. At this point, we were still in England. Mm. And then I think I've shared my endometriosis story on my channel, if you want to have a look. Um, so yeah my periods were getting really bad and I'd go to the doctor yeah. and they'd give me excuses and they would not investigate properly mm. um, and then we started to just dig a little deeper and then started like connecting the dots you know that was here in the UK yeah mm -hmm. and then obviously we went traveling to Australia mm -hmm. I don't know if you want to tell this part because you probably remember better because I was yeah so we mm -hmm. um, we Basically, long story short, is we went traveling for a time, and then after that, we went to Australia and we were there for a year. Um, when we were in Australia, Laura's periods were really bad. I mean, they had slowly gotten worse and worse, but this wasn't just the pain, this was then like the emotional side. We discovered that um, she has more like PMDD symptoms and she was really struggling and suffering. So we just went to the doctor there and we're like, look, hey, this is the situation. She has really bad periods. We think it could be endometriosis, but it's not proven because in the UK, they take forever Ages. um so the doctor was chill in australia the medical care is very different like they're just like yeah cool what do you want um so then it started there yeah mm -hmm. um they started doing all the tests um what was really cool about australia is they treated us as a couple yeah so i had endometriosis and obviously we explained that at that point i think we'd be married four to five years yeah and they were like okay that's not normal they were like do you have kids and we're like no they're like do you want kids and we're like yes and they're like mm, that's yeah. not that normal maybe we should look into that yeah because we hadn't been on any contraceptives for no. five years five years yeah um so they treated us as a couple they mm -hmm. referred us to the gynecologist and the infertility clinic um jack went to have his sample tested mm -hmm. you know and i had scans and blood tests and stuff like that and then um like i said obviously i've shared about my endo story on there so i'm not going to go into that mm -hmm. but i had my surgery and everything yeah and then when it came when we sort of found out the doctor sat us down and basically said you're not gonna have kids you, you can't have kids it's basically impossible mm -hmm. for naturally. you to have kids naturally 
Um, and we were like, uh, okay, so like, why? Yeah. Completely set up and ready for them to say, oh, endometriosis, you yeah. know, issues with Laura, yeah. tubes are, you know. Yeah. And then they were just like, no, no, so it's, it's fully male factor infertility. Yeah. Laura, actually, other than endometriosis, you look good. And I just remember sitting there thinking, wow, the wind had completely been taken out of my sails. Like I just mm. wasn't expecting that, I don't yeah. think. Yeah. Um, but we never would have had those results and tests done. Um, we probably would have just kept going for a little while had it not been for obviously Laura's pain yeah. um, from the periods in the beginning. Yeah, exactly. Um, obviously like Jack explained, he was a bit devastated. I would say by this point at age 24, I was enjoying life, <laughs> yeah. you know? The only problem was the endo. So at this point, Jack actually wanted kids desperately, like mm. more than me. Um, and then when we found out, he was devastated. Mm. I mean, he, yeah, I, I think for like, me it was that main thought of well, it's it's just what you do. You get married, you have kids, and mm. you have a happy family, and and you know, be fruitful and multiply. Well, where did that stop happening for us? You know, <laughs> yeah. um, but I think. It was a bit of a shock, obviously it took some time to get over that. Pride was a big thing that I had to deal with. I might in the future do a video, I don't know. I'm not into this whole YouTube thing, um, but we'll see. But um, I think just in our marriage and God really helped me to deal with pride and, and how I realized that was quite a big thing for me. Um, and then we move forward. And, and when they said you can't have kids, they do like this weird pause. They're like, so you're, you're basically <laughs> infertile. <laughs> but but um, it does cost you 4,000 Australian dollars to have your own kids. Yeah. So they said, yes, you're infertile, but because it's male factor, obviously um, treatments have very much uh, improved and there's lots of different options for you. So don't lose hope there. Yeah. Long story short, we were going to, I think we probably would have just continued in Australia, but we had yeah. to come home. Um, yeah. Due to various reasons, um, we ended up back in England. Yeah. Um, for me, when we found out, obviously, that we couldn't have kids, um, it... You were chill. I, I was quite I, surprised. The thing is, it's not because I wanted to be chill. For me, I'm quite a, okay, something's gone wrong. Practical. Let's just get on with life and put it, you know, sweep it under the carpet. Come on, you can do it. You don't need to be weak. Let's just keep going. Um, which is obviously the wrong way to deal with it. Hmm. For me, I just thought, oh well, I just focus on my career and like I'm just gonna work hard and be successful. That was a coping mechanism for me. Um, so actually later down the road, moving back to England, I started feeling a bit down about it. Um, and then we then went back to our doctors here in England and started the process of being referred to a fertility clinic mm -hmm. in Salisbury. Yeah. Um, and that was also, they gave us a choice. They basically, because we, we went to the clinic here in the UK because Laura was still suffering really bad with endo. Um, it was affecting work. She was just tired and just issues. Yeah. So we went to the doctor and we said, look, this is, <laughs> we went with paperwork and it was like, here's our file from Australia and he, he was like wow they're really thorough aren't they we were like yes they yes are. maybe we should learn in the UK <laughs> um, but he said look in all honesty we will send Laura and they did in the UK you went to see a specialist yeah. here as well um, and they said you know what you've got a choice do you want a baby or do you want less pain yeah and Laura was like uh, okay yeah. um, so they said there's no point to prod around and and uh, do more surgeries and get to the bottom of endo if we're wanting to go through the route of IVF yeah. um, because it's just not worth the, the added risk. Yeah. So I think we had decided, unfortunately, you had to we're suck up the pain for a bit. Yeah, and go through the infertility route. Yeah. And I mean, fast forward, we vlogged the process of our IVF journey. Um, so there will definitely be more videos on our channel to do with that. But it was a hard hit to the stomach mm. to know that I have to choose um, between having pain or having our infertility mm. issues sorted out because they couldn't do both at the same time. And yeah, it's just been, it's been a hard journey so far. Um, My little trooper. Uh, well, mm. what can we do? But 
we've come to full acceptance now that this is our road this yeah. is what god has given us in our lives to deal with mm -hmm. um and i think at this point we realize it's for other people to learn from um and to realize that infertility doesn't define you um but i think there's a saying that says god gives his toughest battles to the toughest soldiers yeah something like that <laughs> Um, I think one thing as well is we really didn't realize how many people struggle with this issue yeah. um, of infertility whether it's male factor or joint factor or female factor yeah. um, there is a whole community out there yeah. um, and I mean thousands and thousands of people yeah. in groups going through the exact same thing yeah. um, so one thing I know for sure is that it's been really tough but we really hope that somewhere the Lord will use this um, to help others that yeah. our lives will continue to be a light in that yeah. um, and we'll keep you updated with the journey I think yeah and to, to just know that you're not alone you're not abnormal um, I think sometimes having even the thoughts of feeling jealous of your pregnant friends or people that have children is totally normal um it's a whole journey we had to go realizing um all these feelings that you go through um sometimes you feel like embarrassed like oh my word i can't believe i'm thinking this but having other people around us we've had friends actually very close friends that went through the journey with us um to be able to share has been such a great help yeah um so yeah that's basically why we are sharing our journey because it's it's important so that we make it become like a normal thing to talk about and yeah. there is no stigma yeah to it. one thing i would say is don't ask the silly questions yeah. um you know i think very often you just assume oh, there's a young couple and i'm and it's all uh, aspects of life. It's not just um, family, friends, relatives, church. It's everywhere. Yeah. But people will be like, oh, when are you having a baby? When are you having a baby? Oh, you're next. Yeah. Oh, Laura, you're glowing. Are you pregnant? Like, yeah. I just think those sorts of things we need to evaluate how often we ask. Yeah, exactly. Um, Even for me, before we found out we were... I don't want to say that. <laughs> but, um, no, but it's true. Before we found out, I used to be the girl that would be like, oh, when are you getting married? When are you having kids? But until, yeah, I love being a French maker. <laughs> until you've been through something, you don't know what that other person is going through. You don't know what private battles, what, yeah. how many times they've cried themselves to sleep. So it's just to be cautious and careful when you ask people when they're having kids or why they haven't had a kid yet. You know, it got really frustrating for sometimes um when people would ask that question i would end up saying i don't know ask god you know like why are you asking me this it's quite a personal question but yeah you don't know until you've been through it so yeah please be careful what you ask so we've already had one failed ivf cycle um if you follow me on instagram you already know this um but for that one we definitely kept it very yeah that, we, that was very private um obviously we had to go through all the emotions and everything we're going through so the only people that knew that was our parents and our pastors and church um just to be accountable to everybody and for our parents to be an emotional support and they were they were incredible because yeah. i think you don't realize the ivf journey but i think we'll share yeah we've got videos of that yeah we've got loads and loads of vlogs we... plate smashing videos yeah oh my and... word <laughs> I know i'll share that one um but yeah the first round um, we did vlog it and I will share and obviously we're going into our second round if you follow me on Instagram you know this already mm. um, and we've asked for prayer um, if you're close to me you've already got the dates exactly when to be praying and sending us good thoughts if you're not the praying kind and just literally supporting us like a quick mm. message on those dates just checking in because it can be hard I mean mm. for me I'm very expressive and I talk about this and everything but for Jack if you are friends with him and you're watching this please just check in on him <laughs> you know now and then you know men don't really speak out but I think it's good to have that support mm. so 
so. And the main yeah. thing is we realised that this really does take a village. It doesn't matter whether your child is, is naturally conceived or is yeah. conceived through IVF. They say that a child is raised by a village and for us it's just before yeah. it's <laughs> even Proverbs. yeah before it's even born um, our child needs to be raised by a village. Yeah. It takes a village to raise there a child. There we go. It That's takes a village it. to raise a child. Yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, all the support. Um, we're going to share this publicly. Not everyone will agree, but we want to. Yeah. Um, and yeah. yeah, this is our journey. We never thought we'd be going through infertility and IVF, but here we are. This is the card that we've been dealt. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we just mainly. I definitely want to advocate for other people that are going through it and reach out as well. reach out and let's get rid of the stigma yeah infertility is so common nowadays mm -hmm. i think it's something like one in eight or one in six yeah um so yeah thank yeah. you so much thank you for watching. and seriously if you yeah. are watching and you need to reach out if you're struggling you don't have people to talk to um people know that we're we're very open so come give us a message yeah and we'll be happy to chat yeah, thank you so much Thanks guys for watching. for watching and yeah, we'll be sharing more vlogs soon. So see you soon. Oh, and it, was it Tanaya? How do I work well, Tanaya, but you, you like to be called Laura, is that right? Yeah, Laura's just easier. Yeah, it, well, it's pretty easy, yeah, thank you. Um, lovely, so I've just got your notes here. Okay. Um, and I just checked, so you're, you haven't got any COVID symptoms or isolating, you're fit and well, are you both of you? Yes, both of us are fit and well. Perfect, I'll just document that, otherwise I shall hang up and... And I forget to do it. Okay.